Hey guys, I am about to check out of my hotel room. I have been in Berkeley for the last day and a half. I'm making coffee. Day and a half to uh, speak to students at UC Berkeley with Walkway, the largest national organization for former Democrats. And we had a very successful event. We ended up tabling on campus with signs that were eye-catching, signs that I actually agree with. Signs that were eye-catching, eye signs that triggered some people, actually started some conversations. Certainly were, there were the triggered libs reactions that you would expect, but I was told multiple times, in fact, that I was quite nuanced and that I was a very respectful person, which I appreciate. One, one man, older man, actually, I don't know if he was a professor or what, but he came up and just called me a Nazi, just called me, uh, called me a Nazi and called me a racist, told me I was disgusting. And it, that was interesting because he came up and actually interrupted a long, thoughtful conversation that I was ha having, where we in fact did find some middle ground. And it was about uh, trans, uh, children who think that they're trans. And then this man just comes up, interrupts, doesn't know anything about me, just sees me holding a sign that says stop transing kids. And he, that's what his response is. It's interesting that the most triggered people didn't care to actually talk, didn't care to actually get to know us, didn't care to, didn't, didn't care that in fact there were two gay men with me and then a black woman. It just did not matter. But I, I've never done anything like that before. I am incredibly shy, actually, I'm, I'm very shy, you may not believe that, but I am um, extremely shy, <laughs> and I, I also, I'm introverted for sure, and so I love doing events like this and willfully do them, but I've never been on campus really just engaging one-on-one -on -one with people or even five people against one, I hate to say against one, but sometimes they come up and they're just talking at you. I think it was successful and, and it was an interesting experience. And then in the evening, we had a panel. It was me and uh, Brandon and, and two other walkaways. And we were we had a packed room and we were able to take questions from people and engage with the audience. We were able to tell our walkaway stories. All in all, it was a really successful event. But the main reason I wanted to make this video was just that last night I was reminded, this is something I already knew, as someone who's been involved with Walkway for over a year and I'm now one of the newest employees, the newest employee, uh, I don't agree. I don't agree with all of Walkway on a lot of things. And that's okay because you know what? Walkway is literally just for, it, it is for everyone. And it is, all you have to do is recognize and reject the lies and the manipulations of the radical left and legacy media. And if you do that, walk away is for you. And I was reminded of that fact again on the panel last night because we have such a diversity of opinions. And the interesting thing is on this side of things, whatever you want to call that, because it's not even the right wing, it's literally just not the Democrat side, not the neoliberal side. On this side of things, you're allowed to have diversity of thought. And listen, you know me, I have very strong opinions. I'm shy in real life, but not shy on in front of the camera and on, in the, on, on the internet. I have very strong opinions. And yet somehow I'm able to work with these people, somehow I'm able to do outreach with these people and still disagree with them on things that are very fundamental to me and close to my heart. You can't do that on the other side. You really can't do that on the other side. And I know that from firsthand experience because the thing that ultimately caused me to start my walkway journey was the fact that I was a huge lib, I was a Democrat, I bought everything hook, line, and sinker, but I just had questions and concerns about the response to COVID, especially when compared to the response to the BLM unrest. And uh, it didn't quite make sense to me. And even just having that concern, even asking that question, even wondering when we might open up, even wondering why the parks were all caution taped off if this doesn't spread outside and it's the California summer and the sun's out there and we want to be healthy and just normal questions got me called a racist, got me called selfish by people who knew and liked me and had done theater with me and thought I was a sweet girl and all sorts of things. You could not question, you cannot question. And it didn't matter that I was someone who was amenable to Black Lives Matter, actually. It didn't matter that I was someone who would have considered myself woke. It didn't matter that I was someone who voted for Obama and someone who voted for Hillary and someone who hated Donald Trump. It didn't actually matter because I was not following party line on what we were doing when it came to COVID and what we were doing when it came to BLM unrest, which were two completely different things, by the way, happening simultaneously. We all lived through it. You cannot have a diversity of opinion over there. If you do not check all the boxes exactly as written, you're out. You're out. 
And that is why we see these huge high profile Democrats coming over to the other side of things. And again, the other side is just not Democrat, not Leo, neoliberal. The classical liberals, they're all over here with us. And so, in fact, we are having diversity of thought on this side. And for the most part, we are able to cordially disagree. And I think that's actually a wonderful thing. I know there's concerns about the conservative movement, the Republican Party, uh, you know, becoming more liberal, becoming a big tent. But what I say to that is that when you have people over here, just not over there, not with the Democrats, not captured by legacy media, not captured by the radical, de radical Democrat Party, when you have them over here, you can get in their ear. You can have these conversations. You can change their minds a little bit more. When they're way over there and they're drinking the Kool-Aid, it's hard to change their minds. You have to really, they've got to suffer first. They've got to experience it firsthand like I did. You can't really change someone's mind because they're blinded to facts. They're blinded to the evidence. So it's really hard to sit down and change someone's mind. But when they're over here and they're like, you know what, I, I hate, I don't, I can't vote for Donald Trump, but I also think the Democrats are crazy or whatever it is. You know, they come over, they're RFK, they're more socially liberal, but they've been ousted by the Democrats you can bend their ear more because now you have an alliance, you have a shared experience, you have a shared understanding of what's going on in this country with the Democrat party, with legacy media, and you're able to collaborate more. So I ultimately think that this idea of us becoming the big tent, us becoming the side of unity is actually a good thing. And while it might mean that, oh my gosh, we're becoming more liberal, we're just Democrats with the speed bumps on. No, I think that we're having these conversations, we're having this diversity of opinion, and we're able to change each other's minds, and we're stronger for it. They don't have that on the other side, and they are losing people in and of themselves, and then we're welcoming those people. And ultimately, I think that we're going to be a better movement for it, a better Republican party, if that's what you want to call it. I don't even know sometimes if I'm a Republican, a better conservative movement, if that's what you want to call it. We're going to be a better country for it. And ultimately we are on the side of unity. We're on the side of the majority. We're on the side that's going to win if we keep this up. So I just, I, I was reminded of that last night on the panel. And I wanted to share that with you that it's pretty, it's pretty stunning that we can disagree on some really important, you know, controversial issues and still work together, still speak together, still be part of this movement. And most, a lot of people still on the other side, they don't understand that. You know, they think Walk Away is some kind of Republican organization, some kind of right wing, some kind of pro Trump, some kind of something. And it's really not. It is for, not that there's anything bad with any of those things, but it is literally just for every single American who sees and rejects the lies and the manipulations of the radical left, of the radical Democrats. And I love that. And I'm happy to be a part.